In this lesson, we're going to talk about the likability of the hero, the unlikability of the victim, the universality of these two archetypes, and how the hero can be recognized in a few seconds. So the first thing that I want to talk about is this, is this principle that we established in the previous lesson, which is that we like the very things in other people that we like about ourselves. And if there's something that we dislike about ourselves, we dislike that same thing if we find it in somebody else. And the tricky thing about that is we need to be able to find something that is in everybody that, that they like and avoid something that's in everybody that they dislike. In the last lesson, we introduced the hero and the victim. And again, the hero is defined by persistence. He never, ever, ever, ever gives up. The victim, on the other hand, has the exact opposite behavior. The second he faces any challenge, he falls apart. And we're drawn to heroic characters. We're drawn to heroic characters in fiction. We're drawn to heroic characters in real life. We're drawn to heroic characters in entertainment, and movies. It's the number one thing that pulls us towards somebody is that heroic persistence. And in the same way, we're just irritated and annoyed by people that have this victim mindset. The mindset that says, oh, the second I face any setback, I'm going to fall apart and give up. We find it irritating and annoying. And the only reason that we have these responses is because those very archetypes, the hero and the victim, are found not just in separate characters or people, but found inside of every single person. It's, there's an inner hero and an inner victim inside of you. There's an inner hero and an inner victim inside of me. Now, these are the most powerful of all archetypes, and we're going to be using these to create these winning strategies. Now, you've probably, you probably already know that the earlier a, a trauma or an earlier an event happens in a person's life, the greater an impact that event will have on the person. For example, if a person was locked in a closet when he was three years old, that's going to have a bigger impact on that person than if he got locked in a closet when he was 35 years old. The earlier something happens, the greater an impact it has on your psyche. And as it turns out, the hero and the victim are so powerful because they are formed so early. They're actually formed in infancy. And let's talk about how that happens. Remember, the victim's job is to cry for help. And for the first several months of life, that is literally all an infant can do. All they can do is cry for help. So because of that, all of us have that inner victim. All of us have that part of us that was born at the very beginning of our existence whose only tool is to cry for help. Later on though, this other thing developed, the hero developed. I'm gonna walk you through why that hero develops in every person. Why the victim develops in every person is obvious. Every single person needs to cry for help when they're born. But let's talk about the development of the hero. I'm going to walk you through an example. Suppose there is an infant who wants to get into some forbidden cabinet. He does what infants do. He cries and points at the cabinet. Now, the parent, of course, refuses to help him get into that cabinet, so he cries louder and he points more forcefully. The parent keeps refusing, and he just points louder and cries harder. The parent refuses, and then something amazing happens. All the crying stops. All the pointing stops. At that moment, the infant has realized that he cannot rely on the adult to get that thing. In that moment, the infant's inner hero has been activated. So here's what he does now. He waits for the adult's back to be turned. He scurries over to the, to the forbidden cabinet and tries to work away at the lock. The adult sees, moves him to a different room. Again, he waits and he scurries back over. Keeps working away at it. And that's the infant's inner hero. Here's how powerful that inner hero is. In all the houses I've been to in my life, I have never seen an intact playpen. The infant somehow managed to break through the high tensile strength ballistic nylon in every playpen because that's how persistent they are. Now, what did you see in this case? The, victim, the, in the infant first tried the victim approach. When the victim approach didn't work, he then tried 
the heroic approach. He activated the inner hero. And you and I do the same thing when we interact with anything. If we face a problem, we always try the victim approach first. Our first step is always to act for help, ask for help. Only when there's just no chance of help coming do we activate the inner hero. And that's something incredibly rare. However, it's also incredibly inspiring. The inner hero is exhilarating, it's electrifying, it's this high calorie, high octane, exciting way of existing. So when we see it, we're drawn to it because we're drawn to that part of ourselves. Although the inner hero is rarely activated, when it is activated, it's so compelling and it's so exciting. So let's take a look at what it would take to activate the inner hero. I'm gonna give you a made up story and to, sh to show you what it really takes for the hero to have any relevance. Imagine this, suppose that somebody comes home from work. He turns on the sink, no water comes out. Is it time to activate the inner hero? No, not even close. He calls a water company and they say, oh, your water bill is paid up, everything should be fine. Is it time for the inner hero now? Not even close. He calls a plumber. The plumber looks at all the pipes as everything seems fine. And then well, here's what the plumber does. He's like, you know, you and I are probably thirsty. I'm going to go to the truck, get a couple of bottles of water. He brings in the water. And the water vanishes as soon as he steps into the house. The bottle's there, but now it's completely empty. So now is the time for the inner hero? Nope. At this point, the, the person might call the, the police. He might call the National Guard. He might call MIT or CERN or the NSA. He's going to call other people for help. He's going to turn to experts. Now, let's say they do this research for months and months. They can't figure it out. The government says we have a government program. Because the laws of physics don't work right in your house, we're going to buy you a new house. It's a better house. It's closer to your, to your office or whatever. And now the problem, in a sense, is solved. Now that person has a choice. He can let it drop. He's, he can say, I have a house. Everything's fine. I have water. I don't have nothing to worry about. Or he can now choose to pursue it. Now what's happened in this moment is if he chooses to pursue it, he's stepping into what we call uncharted territory. There are no experts here that can help him. The experts have all tried and given up. The victim has done everything he can. The inner victim has done everything he can. He's turned to help to every single person. No one can help him. So now he activates, if he chooses to, he activates the inner hero. The inner hero exists in all of us and it's almost a biological process. The second that you step into uncharted territory, you immediately activate the inner hero. The second you step out of uncharted territory, the inner hero automatically turns off. It's kind of like if you step into a very, very cold room, like a cold freezer or something, you start to shiver. You step out of the cold, you stop shivering. You're in a really hot environment, you sweat. You step out of the hot environment, you stop sweating. That's how the inner hero is. It turns on automatically in uncharted territory. It turns off automatically in charted territory. And the inner hero is incredibly magnetic. It is so magnetic that the mere existence of stepping into uncharted territory lets us know that this person is magnetic because that person needs to activate the inner hero. So here's what we know now. The hero is defined by persistence, but that's not how we recognize him. We recognize the hero by the moment he steps into uncharted territory. When he takes that heroic step, when he goes into uncharted territory, we know for certain that we're dealing with the hero. And in that moment, the person becomes automatically inspiring. Now, in the next video, I'm going to give you an example, I'll show you an example of what it looks like when somebody transitions from charted territory, which is boring, to uncharted territory, which is incredibly inspiring. And you'll start to see how important these tools can be in those critical moments when an admissions officer is deciding whether or not to let you in.